Yo, what's good? It's your boy Derek Branch here at Strike7Sports.com. This is another episode of the Strike 7 Sports Podcast. I'm joined by my co host Brian Bader and the Olden Seabury. It's another episode of the Strike 7 Sports Podcast. And we'll go right into it. Um, in regards to the NFL, it was a, a weird week. It was a very strange uh, week that occurred. Um, none of the, I would say, upper echelon teams in the league was successful last night. Uh, well, on Sunday. Uh, we had uh, Dallas win down to uh, Dem- uh, the Denver Broncos at home. We had uh, the Buffalo Bills could not move the football against Jacksonville, of all people. You had uh, <laughs> the Saints losing to the Atlanta Falcons, rallying from behind. Lose to the Atlanta Falcons team without Calvin Ridley. Um... Pretty much not a, I mean, he lost to a Falcons team that, that had Cordell Patterson as a running back. You know, um, just wow. Yeah, the Raiders they went down to um, they went they lost to the New York Giants. That was wild. Um, Minnesota almost beat the uh, Lamar Jackson, the Baltimore Ravens, but that fell through. That's an echo going on. Echo, you hear me? I mean, it sounds pretty good to me. All right, all right, all right, all right. But uh, it was a wild week, man. It just uh, a lot went down this week, man. A lot of went down uh, yesterday. Um, another big surprise that went down. Another upset was the uh, Tennessee Titans going on the road to beat the uh, L.A. Rams at uh, SoFi Stadium, the home of the Super Bowl. Um, they got the Rams on. A, to me, it just uh, they got the Rams on a on a, on a bad night. A bad night. Uh, that's a really good offense that they shut down. But if they had to play again, this this is me being unbiased. I think the Rams would beat them, but they they got the Rams on a bad night. It happens. It happened throughout the league yesterday. All the, pretty much all the good teams went down. Oh, also Green Bay went down to a um, a different version of the Kansas City Chiefs. They lost yesterday. Um, if they made enough, if they made a few, a few plays here and there, Green Bay could have pulled up the upset, but it didn't happen. So, so I get y'all thoughts on what went down uh, yesterday in the uh, NFL. Are y'all surprised by it, or is you just you know it's the NFL? I'm I'm, I'm kind of surprised. Like I was surprised by a lot of things because normally in the NFL, if you you typically league can win out of talent, but like, and you can win out of having like the better players. But, it, but it also, it just shows you the NFL, like, it's also, it's unpredictable. Like, it's about every day, so like, no, nobody is on really a, a guaranteed win. Like, because no one would have written, no, not a lot of people would have thought that they would have won against Buffalo. Especially the whole Buffalo to six points. Like, to do that is really impressive. And, like, really, what it showed me was that any team in the NFL is beatable. I noticed that you just tweeted. Like, you tweeted out, like, a lot of these top echelons are looking at them, like, good elite squads. They can be, they have flaws and faux pas that they can be exposed by the right team. And and apparently that's what happened. Like, a lot of these top top squads, like the Rams, Titans, got to expose them. Like, like you said, like I just said, the Bills just got exposed by the Jaguars, Cowboys, folks. A lot of these teams still have weaknesses they needed to work on. Because some of these teams needed to see that they're not perfect. And they, and they and last, and yesterday gave them a real good opportunity to make them move on. Right. And um, one more, man. The um, I got I to gotta talk about this one, too. Uh, Arizona, man. Arizona went on the road with Colt McCoy and no D out in B 49ers, man. That's wild. So that's that's a good thing right there, man. You can win without your quarterback. A lot of backups are winning this year. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, anything can happen any given Sunday. Uh, but like for the example you just mentioned, uh, Arizona, they're a good football team. So and the 49ers, someone wrote an article, and I think they're correct. 49ers are broken right now. You can you can no longer just. I mean, they've had some injuries, but you can't use that really as an excuse. You gotta win that game. You have the "quote unquote" better quarterback, and you still, maybe not the better team, but the better quarterback, and you still don't win that. That's just unacceptable. But uh, I think you're kind of 
disrespecting the Titans. That was just an ass whooping, what they did to the Rams. And I'm not saying that they can't, that they, the Rams couldn't beat them if they played again, but the Titans dominated that game. And so, uh, I think you, I, I know you guys may not like the Titans. I know no, I ain't got nothing against, no, no. I, just, uh, just put respect on my team's name. I ain't got nothing against the Titans, bro. I ain't got nothing against the Titans. I ain't got nothing against the Titans, man. I like the Titans. legit, man. If this was the Saints, I would be praised them. I like the Titans, bro. Put respect on their names. That's all I was going to say. I don't have nothing against the Titans, man. Say what? I don't have nothing against the Tennessee Titans, man. I'm just saying they got the Rams on a bad night. And you know how it is, man. When you beat a team by double digits in their own place and the way the Titans dominated them, they beat them fair and square, and, they, and, and I'm not saying you, you're implying that they didn't, but they, they dominated them, in my opinion. Uh, and so, hopefully, we they can be back in February, and we can win a Super Bowl for the very first time. But the Titans, they're legit. They're legit. I mean, they're legit, man, but the way, the way I see it, man, I think this is a year that the number one seeds could go down. Like, in the first, like, if, Get home field advantage, they could lose. I know what I think. In that's both fair. conferences. I think it's very it's wide up, and I think that's what makes it great. There's a lot of parity, especially in the AFC. Right. Uh, and he knows he could come out of that. I think any team that makes a playoff could legit make a case we can come out. Maybe maybe the Chiefs, ironically. Hey, it happened. It can happen. I just, the Chiefs right now, they, they just don't. They just aren't. To me, and I don't think they have to be what they were because they were dominant, but they just aren't consistent. And, like, someone made a case, Ryan Clark, thinks Patrick Mahomes is broken. And I'm not going to say I go as far as believing that, but I think it's fair to say the Chiefs have been figured out. I think that's a, yeah. And they, they haven't really found ways to adjust because of that. Yeah. At least consistently. And so. They, the only reason, in my opinion, they beat the Packers because Jordan Love was starting. If it was Aaron Rodgers, they would have lost. Yeah. Yeah, another thing um, I heard yesterday on, um, I think it was Sports Center in, um, in the evening after the games. They were talking to uh, Damian Woody, and he was saying how uh, no de- defenses are not letting um, Tyreek Hill get behind him and beat him deep. They've taken away that opportunity, that um, feature of the Chiefs' offense. And. The Chiefs don't like to run the football, man. They're still not running the football, right? They're not. That's hurting them as well. They can win methodically. They could. They could. They could carve a defense up methodically with um Travis Kelsey, but that's not their style, man. Their style is quick strikes, throw it deep, score points, um, rinse and repeat. But they're not doing that, and they're struggling. When you take that away from them, they, they don't. They struggle. So we'll see, man. Anything? Got anything about the after that league? I feel that like people are expecting. I mean, I ain't really two things to say. The first thing is like people are, are expecting to get the, the Chiefs to get their act together and just make the playoffs. But as the leagues get closer and closer, I think it's a real possibility they don't make it. And yeah. I think that it's a chance that they play themselves out of playoffs. Even if it wins, I mean, they're winning games, but they're not. The way that they're winning games is not sustainable for a long as you get to the back half of the season. Secondly. I think this year, if you really like y'all said, like they, like you said, I agree with you. Be, you know, ever since the uh, last year they went to the one, uh, one team gets home and then try to collect uh, and the other, what the other, like, the one team gets off the other team two to seven have to play. I think that this year would be like, the year really don't matter. I don't think that matters. Like, I agree with you. I think if we have regardless, whoever gets to the number one team, both of them go down. Wow. Because that would definitely both come. <laughs> Any team could make a case. This year, I think only the best they can Right. That's true, man. It's just, it's going to be wide open, man. So we'll see, man. All right, man. Moving right along, man. Um, well, first topic I wanted to talk about tonight is uh, this Aaron Rodgers situation and the media. Um, I would say. Taking the size on it, uh, reporting to the, the public and all that other stuff. So, as many of you already know, uh, Aaron Rodgers tested positive for C-19. 
a few days ago, and he went on a Pat McAfee show to, to talk about it and bring some clarity to the situation. And he was saying that he didn't lie about when he said he was a uh, quote uh, immunized for the against the virus and all the things about being canceled and this side's gonna love him and the other side's gonna you know cancel him and things like that. I just want to ask y'all, man. I got I got a quote here from a uh, former NFL tight end Benjamin Watson. I'm just going to read it to y'all real quick. Quote: COVID vaccination status never should be public knowledge. Media shouldn't have been permitted to interrogate NFL players about themselves or teammates. It only served to pressure players to decisions to avoid scrutiny and allow the public to assassinate their character. End quote. That came from Benjamin Watson. So yesterday, uh, Terry Bradshaw on the uh, NFL count, well, yeah, Fox, yeah, NFL on Fox countdown pretty much called uh, Rogers a liar and he needs to go to the military academy to teach not be taught not to lie and I'm just like really dude I mean I wish people on the outside really understood the military and what goes on I'm a, I mean I served you know a long time on active duty I'm still in but I'm a reserve member but it ain't peaches and cream everybody think it is but you know it's just ignorance on his behalf but I just want to ask y'all man as we all journalists right should do you think it's of the public's concern to know the vaccination status of players, of athletes in general? And should it be our place as media members, the journalists, journalists to paint a narrative on these players? Y'all, any one of y'all can go, man, and I'll go last. I'll go first. Go ahead. That's a really tough question. I personally don't really care. But the one thing I will say, if you get if you test positive, then it's almost like you have no choice as a media member to ask the question. You know what I mean? But if, you, if you but if we it's we putting our feelings into it though. Tell yeah, me why. I, I, I mean, I'm not really. I really don't care if I took the vaccine. If someone doesn't want to take it, that's their own problem. I just one question I've been thinking of uh, over the past few days. If you had a choice, like a lot of people complaining of the vaccine mandates would you rather have the vaccine mandate or wear a mask for until forever i mean forever which one would you rather choose and i think i know which be what people should or at least i know what i would do i'd rather have the vaccine mandate than wear masks but some people still because they don't want to be told what to do or they just want freedom and all that but uh yeah that, that's the way i look i really really i really thought this should not have been as big of a story as it really was but the one thing I will say, I'm glad Aaron Rodgers came out and went on Pat McAfee's show to explain further. Well, the one he said, when he said he was immunized, I really don't think he should have done that. He should have just said it's either, um, it's vaccinated either he or not. Have told us if he was vaccinated or not, because that's kind of confusing. But other than that, I mean, I guess that's it for me. What you got, Leo? Uh, I think there is. It should be totally knowledge with uh, the guys are being vaccinated or not. I said everybody's been vaccinated. It's just like he lied about it. Like, that's the thing. Like, he lied. Y'all lied about it. Like, it, you can't, like, nobody is criticizing Aaron Rodgers for not being vaccinated. People are criticizing him for lying. Like, the order allegedly lying is what has been told. So, I think that. It's, it's to the players to know. The people, keep in mind, I know a lot of you are doing Zoom interviews and all that stuff. People have the right to know. Like, the public should know this guy, if, he, if he's immunized or not. Like, this, this stuff of man, like, especially if you're not wearing a man to the press come to the other folks. Yeah, please. Themselves in a ring, like when you get to the point to where you're not vaccinated, and you're not a ring, like very affected. So, like, this is not just a sports issue, it becomes a life issue, like a personal issue. Because, what if Roger, okay, Roger didn't end up getting it? What if he infected, like, he's not just in a stadium, he's whole like, he's, he's out and about with people who are potentially be affected. So, I do think people media has the right to know that because they should, they should know, like, people, people in the public should know. It's not just a, 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 
Diana Rocco running for the one in the real thing. This is our life. Right. Like, for some people, it would have real health issues. Media, media is not exposing someone by saying the truth. That's what I, that's what I also learned in front of the class. You're not exposing someone by telling the truth. You're just keeping it real. You get vaccinated, you're not. Simple. But when I see a lot of like the narratives getting painted on certain players, man, when they get like it's a different standard for Kyrie. But then when Aaron Rodgers is like, you know, certain people don't say nothing. You know what nah, I'm saying? He got blasted. He got blasted on. He got blasted on. Yeah, but I mean, to me, man, it's just I just see a lot of people putting their feelings into it, man. Me personally, that's why I just a lot of people getting getting in the feelings and you know how it is, man. I just I just think, man. I just say report on it, report on it, and move on, bro. I, I mean, Farron Rogers, it is his health status, his. I would say his social status financially, he can afford to get the best treatment on that stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? Compared to like somebody working at FedEx or something. You know what I'm saying? And what I don't like about and I love I love Kyrie Irving, man. He's, you know, he's one of my, my, my favorite players in the league, but I just think he should have he's not providing a, a good a solution. To how to deal with it if you don't want to get vaccinated. You know what I'm saying? Because you out here with your platform, you influencing people. And, and people on the outside, like normal people, follow that stuff. They get, it's easy to influence people like that. You know what I'm saying? And, and these people lose their jobs because they don't want to get vaccinated. Will you help them out? You know what I'm saying? Like if you call, like you had to text... You had to email Kyrie's PR team or something like that. I bet you wouldn't even get an email from him about support or something while you you you're out of a job. You know what I'm saying? This dude, this dude gonna make sixteen million dollars if he don't play this year. He's gonna make sixteen million dollars. You know what I'm saying? Man, Not I even. Wish I had that luxury. You know what I'm saying? Nobody. We don't have the normal regular people don't have these luxuries, man. But what we we ain't gonna do. Aaron Rodgers can miss games. But uh, but uh, but but you, but but now you see how missing games because of this stuff is causing the might cause Green Bay a, um, a playoff spot. Not I won't say playoff spot, but seedings. You know, they play Seattle next, so we'll see. Y'all got next to add, man? Because me personally, man, I re I really don't. I mean, if you're not vaccinated, you're not vaccinated. Only thing I say is be safe. Just be careful out there. Be really careful. You got anything in that? No. I, I agree. Like I, I feel that you just like I mean I agree with terms of, of the like maybe like I understand why you, people would like you just report and move on, but at the same time, let me be like like you gotta if if players aren't doing like 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 I said like it's no problem. There is no problem like being vaccinated, but you need to follow the right protocols and precautions that come with the league. The league has for when you're like players who aren't vaccinated. Like you're not doing it, it should be reported on. Like it shouldn't. I don't think because Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers, he to get a pass and and what you would call it. And he got blasted on. Kyrie has got blasted on, but Kyrie has said that has been consistent from the jump. Yeah. He never said he got immunized, and then what wasn't. Immunized, like it was, like it got immunized. Like he, he just said for the jump, I'm not doing this. Like that's what he said, and he being consistent. The, he wasn't, he didn't even say he got immunized. He wasn't, he was immunized, and then, then it turned out he wasn't. So I mean, I just think that it should be really like long as I feel like if the facts are being reported about it, like, I don't know if it's being like made public. That's true, man. That's true. I mean. You're not vaccinated or you're, you're vaccinated or you're vaccinated, you're fine with me. I ain't going to demonize you or anything like that. I'm going to just report on it and just, you know, keep it moving. And when you cross the team, you know, the number one seed, then I might say something. But <laughs> other than that, we good, though. But um, moving right along, man. Um, Let's talk about, I want to talk about surprise teams in the NFL right now. Like, what is the biggest surprise squad of, your, of this 2021 season? I'm going to just go ahead first. I'm going to just go with the Arizona Cardinals, man. Because I didn't expect 
his team to be to to be that talented. Well, I've known that they were talented, but I didn't think they would probably. I didn't think they would have a chance to like run run away with the AFC, the NFC West, because I thought it was gonna be a, a tough division. We had. I thought Seattle was gonna be a squad, gonna be a good team. I thought San Francisco was gonna be a good team. Clearly, they're not what we thought they were. Um, the Rams are good, but it's showing that they may not be. They may not be good enough to win the division. Where they're still, they're still. They only lost two games. There's still opportunities from the um get the lead in the division. But so far as the um they lost yesterday, so the the Cardinals got a leg up on them. So my surprise team right now is the um. Arizona Cardinals. Yeah, uh, I, I agree completely. They've been, Cliff Kingsbury was on the hot seat, in my opinion, and still is, because their problem is he's, they've gotten off to good starts on them except for the first year. Yeah. And how will they finish is going to be interesting. But winning without Tyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins, even though the 49ers aren't as good as they've been, Past year, still pretty impressive win. So uh, let's see what they can do moving forward. But yeah, they've been absolutely uh, unbelievable. Uh, but to another team, and I think you guys know where I'm going. The Tennessee Titans. Uh, oh, I thought they'd on, be alright. Come been on, a, man. Dude, that's, a, that's, an easy division, man. that's an easy division, <laughs> like, man. That's an easy division, man. Nobody thought they would be the number one seed after that brutal schedule they had to have. So. It's unbelievable what they're doing, and uh, Chris Collinsworth made one hell of a point. Oh God, man. The Chris Collinsworth! Oh man, nah. come on, man. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, but he made a point like I wouldn't want to face this team in ten degree weather because this team is built football. He the and... one that jinxed Matthew Stafford. Let <laughs> me say he was the MVP candidate. Matthew Stafford threw two couple picks after that. <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, I like what the Titans have done, and we'll see what they can do. Because I feel like their problem is with beating the good teams. It's what, when they play the bad teams, what they do. So I can't wait to see what this stretch. Especially if they're playing the Saints. The Saints aren't a good team. So uh, we'll see how they do. <laughs> I'm kidding. The Saints are a good team. But um, we'll me. see. They have the easiest remaining schedule. So they, they should get the number one seed if they they care of business. But we'll see. Because as we've seen the past few weeks, nothing's given in the NFL, and uh, anything can happen any given Sunday. Yeah, Leo. Um, for me, I say the two teams. Um, number one, I go with um, my team. I really, I say the Dallas Cowboys. I feel like. Hey, we got a good game going on too, man. Uh, we got good, we got a tight game going on too, man. Go ahead, man. Yeah, I'm about to ask That's why. Go ahead, man. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys are really been a team for me that surprised. Like this, that's one of the two teams. It's been because every year we know they had a talent, but it's a matter of can they all put it together. But surprisingly, y'all, uh, it's been the Cowboys defense that's really impressed me. We know what the offense can do. The defense has really come together with them. With the Michael Parsons, Lion Rippers, and um, and the uh, the Murray, the Trevon Diggs, they really complement their offense, which already has a lot of pieces around it with a very good defense. And I think that that can get them really far. I didn't think that they would be able to do both. I knew we'd have a they not we. I knew they'd have a potent offense, but I didn't think that it would it would transfer over defensively. But they have talent in all three levels. But they're really a team that's gonna get really surprised by the Patriots. Um, New England Patriots have uh, – I really didn't know what to expect from them going into this season. They were kind of looking for an identity, and, and, and I really am surprised at how the, they've come together. Mike Jones has played really well. He's played with big free football. He's kept them in every game that they pretty much have been in. And I like the fact that they're finding – now they're finding ways to win games. Um, obviously, they dominated these last two games teams with the Panthers and Jets. And I feel like – the buff the Buffalo hasn't wrapped up that AFC East yet, and I feel like New England have a chance to to, to emerge, and they still have to play Buffalo twice. So I think there's a chance New England can can get back in the AFC East race very quickly if they keep playing good, solid, uh, complimentary football. Yeah, man, that's that's crazy, man. That we've been it was nine weeks into the season, 
and they haven't played Buffalo and uh, New England hasn't even played yet. That's crazy, man. But they're playing better though. Um, look like it might happen again tonight. We might have another upset. The way it's looking, but we'll see. What's the score right now? Twenty-three or twenty. <laughs> Big, Big Ben threw a pick, but they uh they threw, they, they threw a flag, man. Ah, okay, okay. But yeah, man. Um, Dallas, man. One thing with Dallas, I felt like a lot of people were unsure of Dak Prescott um being coming coming back being the Dak Prescott of old because of his injury. I just like I didn't. That's like that's like uh cliche stuff with um. Uh, Players, man, when they come off of injuries, people have their doubts and all that stuff. I did only, only athlete, only position I would have my doubts on of being their normal self is like a running back position or a wide receiver. But quarterbacks coming back, they, they're usually fine. And I felt like when Ron Rivera decided to go with Ryan uh, Fitzpatrick to be his starting quarterback. I couldn't respect them. I couldn't. I couldn't predict. I couldn't say that they were going to repeat them and they're going to win the division. I was just because when you do that, when you do things like that, that shows me that you're not really serious. I won't say. I won't say serious, but winning your division, you're not really. You you kind of under, under, underestimated the other teams in the division. You kind of you felt like Dak wasn't going to be a hundred. To me, it felt like he thought Dak wasn't going to be a hundred percent when he comes back. And he can win it with. He said, "We thought, well, well, got this D line I have, this running game, I can win a division with this, with Ryan Fitzpatrick." So that I felt like they weren't going to win the division. I thought it was going to be Dallas to win to win that division, man. And I know Philly was going to have the issues. You got anything else to add? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, Dallas will win the division, but that's all I see them doing. Uh, I don't see this team being a legit contender. I look at the, the really good teams in the NFC. They're not better than the Cardinals. They're not better than the 49ers. I mean, not for the the uh, the uh, Buccaneers. They're not better than uh, the Packers, and they're not better than the Rams. So, and you're gonna have to at least beat one, maybe even two teams to make it to the Super Bowl. Good luck with that. Uh, they, they, they're, they're better than they were last year. Their division is awful, so they kind of benefited off of that too. But uh, I see them. Maybe they want to put out game, but that's about it. I don't see them doing much. All right, man. That's cool. All right, moving right along. Um, we're gonna talk about some college football real quick, and and, and more in particular, um, what went down in uh, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, between the Alabama Crimson Tide, number one, two, the number two ranked team in the country by according to. The college football playoff committee play, playing a um, pretty much depleted LSU football team. And it's, I'm going to just go back to what we was talking about in the beginning, how the week was with the NFL. You can say the same thing about college football. Because you had Michigan State, then went down. Um, Cincinnati had their issues. Oregon... Struggle for a little bit. Um, Georgia is Georgia. You know, they, they just demolish uh, some Missouri. But I'm a, for, let's focus on, on this uh, LSU Alabama game. LSU ain't had none of their up at their up, none of their top tier players on the roster. Kayshawn Boutte gone out. Uh, a bunch of guys off the defensive line injured. Ed Ogeron pretty much can he done for the year. And it pretty much pushed Alabama around, man, for all for like the entire football game. And I was just like, wait a minute, man, this ain't happening again. Because the last time Alabama, well, they had the Canelo Alvarez, uh, Caleb Plant fight. The last time Alabama got pushed around, it was a uh, Wilder Fury three. I'm like, is it happening again? And I'm just like, yo, if Max, if I'm gonna say it, if the LSU had Miles Brennan, they probably would have won this football game. Max Johnson, I, don't, I mean, I think he, I don't know if he earned a job going into next year, but they almost beat Alabama 20 to 14. I wonder if this is going to affect Bama's rankings because, you know, Michigan won, Notre Dame won. But, anyways, I want to ask y'all 
What is because they could change on the dime. Alabama. Nick Saban, the way he is, his coaching style, Alabama could change up on the dime. Do you think this Alabama's team right now, the way it's built, the way they've, they've been playing, do you think they could still win that championship? Uh, I go. I go ahead and take this point. Uh, and to answer your question, I think that I think. You got to get better Wi-Fi, man. Hey, go okay. ahead. You back? Back. Go, go. go ahead, man. You ready? Oh, man. Oh, oh, man. Oh. How are you? Oh, my condition is messing up, does Go ahead, uh, man. You got to hear me? Uh, hey. well, let me just go. It'll be quick. Yeah, Alabama can still win it because they got the best coach. They got a really good quarterback, and their defense can, in my opinion, still get the job done. But... It's not going to be easy, and they still got to go to Auburn, and that's always a tough one. And so if they're able to get past that, then they got the game of the year potentially against Georgia. So uh, that sometimes teams have scares. I really think they're going to move everybody up. Let's not see the top five. Cincinnati five, Ohio State four, Oregon three, Alabama two, and Georgia won. I, I, I'll be stunned if they do a lot because everybody struggled this week. Uh, I'm interested to see what they do at six. Will they move Oklahoma there? Or would they put Michigan State, uh, Oklahoma, then Michigan? That's. I just want to see what they get. I just want to see what they got to do, man. That's really – and then the teams that they replace, because there's some teams they're going to have to replace, that's going to be the stuff I'm going to be looking for. But I, I'm assuming – based on history, that they're just going to put the the five uh, right there. I, don't, I doubt they'll do anything crazy. But, you know, with this committee, you just don't know what you're going to get. So we'll see. We you ready? <laughs> All right, man. Let me ask you. Michigan. Do you think it will be a factor this year? State, and then you, you give yourself a shot, and we're assuming a hostile will take care of business against Michigan State, and then you give yourself a shot, like a few years ago, you beat Ohio State, which Harbaugh's not to do, but they have a good, it's at Michigan, and Ohio State is not as good as they've been in years past, you can beat them, so if all of that happens, then you have a shot, but this week will tell me a lot about Michigan, they're going the road, and Penn State's good. Uh, and if they win this, they'll give them some opportunity to have a shot to make the playoff. If they lose it, they can still beat Ohio State, but that'll be all they'll have to play for. Not a playoff spot, so we'll see. Really? I uh, I, I am multitasking too now. We'll see what y'all say, but but uh, I uh, do think that Alabama has a chance to still win the national championship. Talent wise, they're as elite as any team in the nation. I think you got really, with MSU this week, you got a real valiant effort of MSU team that's playing for keeps. And they're not really they're playing with all, like, they were playing with all, like, they just throwing everything out. Like, this, we're going to get up for Bama. This is our football. Like, this is our national championship game. I, but I still think Bama is a, is a top notch team. But I do question on whether a team that's really physical, like, a, like I think if they got in the trenches with a Georgia or with a maybe even a whole state. Or even let's say a, um, let's say like like, a, like I said those two could mainly Georgia or um, Ohio State where they can be pushed around because they really were dominated by some really LSU like backups who I have to say backups but because they LSU was still had a few of their regular players out there but they really let backups run wild all over them and not in terms of like getting the backfield big pressure on Bryce Young. So I really didn't see a, a great Bama effort, but I don't think it's considered a national championship aspiration. But I do think that, yeah, I do wonder if a real physical team like a Georgia, like like I said, gets their hands on them, what they can do to them. And I and it kind of concerns me because I feel like Bama, not as, not as physical as they normally are, even though they still have athletes, but they're not, this, this is not a typical saving physical crunchy, like, 
you're not scoring any points on defense. They they can they gonna bend on you. They'll bend. Trust me. We ask A and M. They'll bend for you. Yeah. Um. What interesting. What the interesting part about this is that. Georgia, I look. I watched Georgia again, another Georgia game to see, to get a good grasp on what I'm looking at with that team. As far as in regards to their offense, their pieces, man, they're not. I don't see nothing spectacular, but their their weapons, man. Um, the wide receiver McCocklin, McCocklin, and the tight end. I think Bama could take them away easily, and his. I will. Uh, that's, just, that's, just, that's just like a playoff game before a playoff game because I want to see how Georgia is going to get tested against Alabama. If this dude, his name Stetson Stetson Bennett, I didn't see JT Daniels. I didn't see JT Daniels this week, and I didn't see him last week. If this dude Stetson Bennett, can this dude move the football against Alabama's defense? Can he play like um, Cam Newton, Deshaun Watson, Trevor uh, Lawrence against? Nick Saban's defense. Because to me, man, the dude, he managing the game, man. Like, you know, Kirby Smart, they don't they don't recruit quarterbacks like Alabama do, man, to me. They don't have, to him, it's just like manage the game. We're going to play good defense, control the time of possession, get good field position and score, run the football, go on. That's it. you got? Uh, I disagree about Georgia recruiting quarterbacks. They have Jake Fromm, who was a five-star. Justin Fields is a five-star. Jake they Fields let him go, though, man. Was a he five took, star. I mean, so he took... They got JT Daniels is a five-star. So, what their quarterbacks do when they're there, that's another story. That's what I'm talking about. But, but it's not like they get it in talent. They get it in talent. And then he just got another five star. So uh it's gonna be interesting how Monty Dash can do. This is interesting. But Ooh. uh you score I just, I just got a big oh. play. <laughs> I just hope they don't score too early because you know I want to leave Big Bell with too much time. But uh what was I gonna say? Yeah, I, I think one and another thing, Georgia has one really good receiver, Arian Smith. They have some all right targets. They're not Great target, and I think Stetson Bennett can do a solid job against Alabama because he played pretty well last uh, time. But um, the key to me will be the matchup in that game. In my opinion, will come down to Georgia's defense versus Bryce Young. Whoever wins that battle will win the game because I think Georgia will get enough. And uh, while they just scored, Georgia will get enough, and uh, uh, so Georgia will get theirs. And defense will get their should get their share of wins, and Stetson and Alabama's offense will get their share of wins. So it'll come down to the, if uh, Stetson Bennett. Well, actually, man, well Stetson Bennett. Will, I'm, my bad. I'm getting confused. Stetson Bennett will get his share of wins, and Alabama's defense will get their share of wins. So can. Bryce Young make a play late in, my, in the game or make one or two plays more than the Georgia defense. That, to me, will decide that game. Assuming Alabama beats Auburn, that's not – no no guarantees there. You think it's a guarantee? Yes. Yeah. I think they should be Auburn, but with Alabama, we just saw them against LSU, that if they play like that, they can get beat. And so, you know what, man? I wish I wish, I wish wish Texas a and was in the uh... – SEC East, man. And put and put Missouri and put Missouri in SEC West, man. Because I think it's kind of unfair that that Texas A and M can't be can't play Alabama again, man. They got the talent, man. Jimbo's yeah. getting the talent. And there's a, I saw this thing today that there's a possibility there could be like a six way tie, something crazy like that. Uh, and, uh, I don't know if that's gonna happen because it, I think if Auburn will have to lose to Mississippi State, and I think Ole Miss will have to lose Ole Miss or Texas a and something like that. But I don't think that that will happen. But uh, but I, I mean I understand what you're saying. But this is what Texas A&M signed for when they left the Big Twelve, so they knew what they were getting into. And 
I'm really surprised they finally have to do it with the quarterback they have. But uh, and um, Jimbo, LSU, I still keep on hearing stuff. LSU's trying really hard to get him, but I think he should stay at Texas A&M because I just think that he has a better chance to win a title. And look, well, he probably could win a title at LSU, but they, they ain't gonna fire him at A&M. They could fire him at LSU, even though Scott Woodard is his guy. But uh, I would just stand at a and Alright, that's all I've got to say. Alright, man. Like, one last topic, man. Like, real quick. So, I, on my timeline today, I saw some Ben Simmons uh, trade talk about him going to uh, Boston for Jalen Brown in return. And I'm kind of... And what I've been hearing... I've been looking at the stand... I checked out the standings today on uh, the, uh, the, the Eastern Conference in Boston. is 4-6. and six. I've been hearing like every now and then some uh, rumors about uh, Jason Tatum, not guys not liking Jason Tatum or something like that. Marcus Smart is going on. I will ask y'all, man, would this trade make sense, man? Jalen Brown for Jason for uh, Ben Simmons, bro. Like, is, is it that bad? Uh, uh, I think for the for the Sixers, it would make perfect sense. First of all, you get a first of all you get a player who's playing. You get a guy who's on the court. You get a guy who's contributing and Brown, and that, and you get a. Yeah, I think when you put Brown, if you put him Brown with him B, I think you get. You may not get the. You may lose some length, but you defensively you still get a great talent, and offensively you get a better talent than what Ben Simmons had. So, I do think that this makes sense for the. I mean for the Sixers. I think it really does for the Celtics too, like. I think with uh, Ben Simmons' payback ability, I think it'll even open up way more avenues for Tatum and other players like, like like a smart. So I think even like when they get a true point guard like a Simmons, it'll set up everybody even better. Brown's a great talent, but he's no true point guard. And Marcus Smart is a great talent, but he's not really a true point guard. He's really a force point guard. So I I really can't. I think it'll be a benefit for both teams. No way, DB Pittsburgh ain't doing nothing. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I, I agree. I think that trade will work. The question is, is what do you have to add to make that happen? And I, I don't see Brad Stevens making that move. Gary Moore would love to make that happen, but I don't see Brad Stevens making that happen. And so uh, it takes two parties to make a trade. But yeah, I agree with everything Leo said or Lee said. That yeah, I think it could work for both teams. And if you another thing that people aren't really talking about, Ime Odoka, who's the head coach of the Celtics, he was with the Sixers a few years ago under Brett Brown, so he has a relationship with Ben Simmons. He knows him, and I think that's important if if he's getting traded to have someone that he knows there. Doesn't mean it automatically work, but that I think having a good relationship with someone is important. I mean, if you get some out of Ben Simmons, man, and he turns out to be that player that. Everybody been looking for. Her. Look out, man. For real. But um, that would be interesting, man. If that go down, man. If they trade up Ben Simmons for Jalen Brown, I, I understand. I can see the I can see the benefits of having um, Sixers having uh, Jalen Brown, and I can see the benefits of having uh, Ben Simmons with the Celtics. You know, guy that can push the ball up the court, probably can connect with uh, Jason Tatum, who I think is a uh, one of the top 10, top 15 talent in the league right now. And as long as, as long as it's, I think the Celtics are at, uh, I think, t- 10th or 12th in the East right now, as long as that stuff don't fester into the all-star break, they'll be fine. But we'll see how it goes, man. All right, that's all we have for y'all for right now. Just give us a like, comment, subscribe. Listen to this on YouTube. Uh, give us a like, comment, subscribe. Let us know how you feel. Um, Apple, give us five-star rating. Um, follow our podcast, support it. Also check out our website, strikeselfsports.com for latest content on the NFL, the NBA, and um, much more. Have a blessed night. Peace. We out.